the next speaker we have Flavio Notari from Legalitax and he's going to tell you everything you should um, know and you never dare to ask about the Italian fiscal system. Thank you, Mattia. Thank you. So, uh, any new taxes that we don't know about? Uh, Not any like new taxes for the moment, but okay. the bulk of the legislation in Italy consider three main taxes uh, that will be analyzed uh, in the next moment. We have three taxes from a certain type, two taxes on income, that is the corporate income taxation, and another tax that is called productive activities taxation, and the value added tax, that is a EU taxation system. And then we want to analyze uh, in the next uh, of the presentation uh, two incentives, the research and development tax credit and the patent box regime that are exemption available to companies that basically do and perform research and development activities to foster their product and service in, in the market. Just to have a quick overview of the rates, the corporate income tax uh, levies a rate at 27.5%, but don't be worried about that because from January the 1st, 2017, the rate will be reduced at 25, 24%. Product activity taxation rate, standard rate is 3.9%, but since this taxation is levied on a regional basis, region can increase or decrease this standard rate according to their willingness. And value added tax, the standard rate is uh, 22%. And for special products uh, and services, uh, reduced rates are available to 10 or 4%. Starting from the corporate income tax, all income derived by corporations that carry on business activities is considered business income and is subject to the corporate income tax. In tax. Corporate income tax is levied both on resident and non-resident companies in two different ways. On resident companies, they are taxed on their worldwide income. Non-resident companies that operate in Italy are subject to Italian tax only on the Italian source income. Who is deemed to be a resident company? A company that has alternatively its registered office, its legal seat, its place of effective management, the place where the managers decide how to rule and govern the company, or its main business purpose. The business purpose is the one you have settled in your articles of association and in your company bylaws. When at least one of these three is fu it's, um, fulfilled, the company is considered to be resident in Italy. At this point, the, the corporate income tax applies with a quite simple mechanism. You start from the result of your financial statements, you make some adjustment, you consider some income to be exempt, and then you apply the rates. As we said, the taxable base is the worldwide income shown in the income statement prepared for the relevant fiscal year accompany according accounting rules. The principle of derivation indicates that the taxable income is determined starting from the economic result, the statutory result derived from the application of the accounting standard you have used to prepare your relevant and approved financial statement. Whether the standard could be the Italian gap, whether the international accounting standard is not important. As soon as you have determined your financial statement final result, you start from that result in order to apply increases or decreases. What are increases or decreases? To be deductible for tax purposes, uh, expenses uh, must be booked into the income statement for the relevant year, but they may be deducted only and only if they are related to your business activities. 
this mean that costs ascribed to the income statement but not the, but not pertaining to your business activities could not be considered deductible so they have to increase it's an adjustment a positive variation from your income statement result other income statement result increases are revenues not ascribed to the income statement but that could be considered taxable on the yearly base the, but there are also sort other certain decreases uh, cost not ascribed to the income statement uh, but can be deductible as well as revenue ascribed into the income statement but not taxable so that here you have a figure representing what we are saying till now you start from the statutory result you apply the, the increases and the cry and decreases provided by the tax law the, once you have determined the difference between these two values you have your ta taxable income base then you apply the rate 27.5 percent this year 24 percent next year and then you find the total amount of taxes due during the year just to enter into a little bit of details about positive adjustments costs that cannot be considered deductible during the year we can focus on the main items you can find during your company life for example employees remuneration compensation in kind or in cash paid to employees is deductible but do consider that there are some certain benefits in kind for example the vehicle, the mobile phone, the apartment, and so on, that can be deductible only in part on, or that can be not deductible at all. Director's fees. The remuneration of the directors can be deducted from the, income, uh, from the taxable base only if it's fully paid. Only the parts that you have paid to the director's remuneration can be deducted from your income. Royalties paid for patents, trademarks, know-how and similar rights are deductible. Service and management fees are deductible. Research and development expenses, they can be deducted during the year in which you are you incurred in those expenses or you can pick up the way of deducting in equal installments in the year and in the four following years. Advertising and marketing expenses, they are deductible in the year they were incurred or you can elect to deduct them in the year and in the following years in equal installments. Entertainment costs, entertainment expenses are deductible to the extent that they are business related and reasonable but do consider that there is a certain limit percentage the 1.5 percent up to 10 million revenues of um, th that percentage can be deducted dividends paid are not the deductibles for interest do consider that generally the interest expense could be fully deducted in within the limit of the interest income the interest expenses in excel is deductible up to the 30 percent of the gross operating margin that is given by the difference between operating revenues and operating cost ex excluding depreciation amortization and leasing expenses but the part of exceeding interest expenses can be carried forward indefinitely in the time and can be deducted if in future fiscal year the gross margin 30 percent of the gross margin has enough space to receive those expenses then we enter into some exemption revenues that are not taxed for example dividends dividends derived by re resident companies from other resident companies are not included in the corporate taxable base for their 95 percent so only on the five percent of their amount the income tax applies as well as capital gains capital gains are the the summing up of the total amount of dividends that could be paid but not have been paid by a corporate 
so they are exempt for the 90% as well. There are some conditions, basically, that the, the company that pays for those dividends is a company resident in a non-blacklist country, and substantially that it conducts commercial activities. Then I want to enter a bit into depreciation and amortization. That's a very specific question. Amortization for tangible asset or, de or um, a depreciation for tangible asset or amortization for intangible asset is the systematic allocation of the cost of the asset through its, li its entire lifetime, through the life that during which the asset can be used. But, and this is true for accounting criteria, but on a taxation point of view, you cannot deduct the cost of the depreciation of the amortization according to the usage of the asset you perform, but you have to consider special criteria, special rates set up by the Ministry of Finance so that you can have differences in the allocation of the cost, the depreciation of the amortization, on an accounting point of view and on a taxation basis. Immovable properties, except from the land that does not depreciate, the rates range, the tax, the tax rate range is between 3 and 5% according to the sector act of activities of your company. As well as plant, machinery and equipment, they, their range of depreciation varies widely from 10 to 40% according to the sector of your company. On the side of intangible assets, trademark and patents can be um, amortized on up to one eighteen of their cost, and goodwill can be amortized only if acquired for a consideration. So that we enter into the standard rate. The standard rate, as we said, is the 27.5, 20, and from 2017 will be reduced to 25%. But there are some certain store taxes that apply for specific sectors, uh, such as oil, gas, energy business related. But what happens if, you, if your company records a loss? Losses can be used, can be carried forward in time and they can be used to offset the income, income of the next period of year up to the 80% of the taxable income. So there is not a limitation in the carry forward of the, of the losses, but there is the limitation of the um, usage of the losses to offset the income statement, the income of the future years. This limitation to the 80% of usage of the of the losses does not apply to tax losses incurred for the first three years of business activities. So for innovative startup, probably the first three year losses could be for carried forward indefinitely in time and can be used fully used to upset to offset the income of the future years. Do consider during the year some deadlines. June the 16th you have the payment of the residual balance of the taxes of the previous year, the payment of the first installment of the taxes of the current year. Then in September the 30th, you have to file your Arnold tax return model to the Internal Revenue Service Agency. And on November the 30th, you have to pay the second installment of the income tax due for the year in, um, in scope. Then we turn into the product activities taxation. That is a regional tax levied on companies, partnership, limited liability companies that run autonomously an organized activity. The regular conduct of uh, an organized activity uh, whether it's a manufacturing activity, a trading activity, or a supply and service activity, requires your company to be subject to the um, regional business tax. And regional business tax is levied in each region in which your company operates on the net value of the production of your corporation. 
if a taxpayer carries on activities in more than one region, the taxpayer must apportion the net value of the production among the region in which it operates. And there are different methods and different uh, criteria to determine uh, the regional business tax for bank, insurance company, and for commercial manufacturing company, you have this chart uh, to consider what is included or not included in the taxable base, or deductible or not deductible. Do consider, as a general rule, that is not included every extraordinary income you derive. For example, capital gains or windfall, for example. And uh, it's deductible more or less everything that pertains uh, the production of your corporate business purpose so that, uh, cor that it's outside from the, the, the deduction only part of the labor cost. Basically, all the permanent contract cost could be deductible from the taxable base and the fixed term employees, they have some deduction on their social security contribution or a special deduction for the employees involved into research and development activities or employees that have a permanent contract in some region that you find listed into the chart. The standard rate for uh, IRAP, regional business tax, is 3.9% but regional authorities may decrease or increase this rate up to the 0.92%. As well as for the income tax, you have some annual deadlines. June the 16th, the payment of the taxes for the previous year and the first installment equal to the 40% of the tax due for the current year. The September the 30th, the annual return and November the 30, the, the second installment, equal to the 60% of the tax due for the previous first fiscal year. Value added tax. Value added tax is a, a taxation on consumption. It's not an Italian tax, it's an EU taxation that Italy has uh, applied on a uniform base as uh, other e EU countries. VAT is levied on the supplies of goods and services made in the undertaking of an enterprise. VAT, a VAT invoice must be issued for all taxable tra tra transactions at the time the transaction takes place. Undertaking of an enterprise means habitually carrying on any of the activity listed in the Code Civil, agricultural activities as well as commercial activities. But do consider that for corporation, limited liability companies, partnership limited by share, and other en commercial entities, they are deemed as persons that undertake an enterprise. Okay? In any case, they are subject to VAT. And the VAT applies on supplies of goods as well as supplies of services. What is a supplies of goods? It's a transfer for consideration of the ownership or on the right of a tangible asset. Supplies of service means assuming an obligation to do, to not to do, or permit to do something. Only goods and services supplied within the territory of the state of Italy are subject to Italian VAT. And the place of taxation of goods is the place of supply for the goods. And the place of taxation for service is uh, mm, uh, the place where the services are provided to taxable, taxable persons established within Italy or the place where the service is provided if you have a final consumer on the other side. VAT is applied on a cruel basis, means that you have not to look at the cash of the transaction, but where the transaction is performed. 
And the mechanism is that uh, the suppliers uh, applies the VAT in its invoice and requires the payment of the VAT from its uh, customer. And the supplier pays for the VAT when it acquires, when it acquires goods or services. The VAT received from the clients, it's due to the states. The VAT paid to, to suppliers, it's a credit against the state. Once you have these two positions, the position that you owe to the state and the position that you have credit to the state, you perform a compensation and you pay the difference or you have the credit for the difference. Standard rate for VAT is the 22%, but do consider that effective from 2018, the standard rate will be increased to 24%. And there are reduced rates for special goods to 10% or to 4%. Exports and intra-community supplies will be charged at a zero rate if there is an evidence that the goods are supplied outside the territory of Italy. Do consider that any person, any taxable person who start a business within Italy has to file to the tax authority the authorization to perform this activity within the 30 days from the establishment. And this system applies also in the other EU, EU countries. And so we enacted a, a system applying for electronic services. So companies that operate in telecommunication, broadcasting and e-service, for example, e-commerce, do not have to file for the registration for VAT purposes in the other EU countries, but they file for the mini one-stop shop. So they perform and they file for the registration in Italy requiring the authorization for the, me, for the mini one-stop shop service and automatically they will be registered also in the other countries so that they will file for all the dues related to VAT only in Italy, not in the other countries. Every time a corporation performs a transaction, must issue an invoice to the, to, the, to the customer. And the invoice has to present some element. Here you find a sample of an invoice. And here you have outlined the uh, elements that are necessary to be explicitly listed on the invoice the date of the supplies on the top right, the number of the invoice, progressive number, and the name and address of the customer. On the other side, on the left side top, the name of the address of the supplier, your name and your address, the name of your company and the address of your company. Then the description, just in the middle, the description of the services and goods supplies, followed by the quantity of goods supplied and the consideration for the goods of services. Then, in the um, uh, later part of the right part, bottom part, uh, the applicable VAT rate, usually the 22%, and the amount of the VAT due. And another, another field in the left bottom with the indication of the applicable law provision. Fulfillments of VAT obligation, February the 28th, VAT annual return, April the 30th, communication of the, all the transactions performed during the previous year, April the 20th, communication of the, all the transactions performed with blacklist countries during the previous year. But do consider that you have periodic and monthly um, uh, payments and returns. Each, mo each month, uh, the 16, you have to liquidate the VAT due to the state. Each month, the 25, you have to report all the transactions performed within other EU countries. So just to sum up, so as not to lose the track of what you're saying, we've talked so far about the, uh, the, the annual national standard income tax, IRES, 
Yeah. We've dealt with the regional tax eat up, yeah. and now we just discussed the VAT, VAT system. So just to let you breathe, since you have reached two thirds of your presentation, and just to break the rhythm and be more uh, interactive, we have some question. questions. Yeah, sure. The first one is uh, uh, if a company um, needs to pay taxes if they are not pro profitable or have no uh, transaction or revenues at all. If so, what kind of taxes they need to pay, how much and when? Okay. On a, um, on a ERS perspective, if you have a, an income, the term in the, in the way we, we said, starting from the income statement result, applies the addition of subtract, subtraction provided by tax law, then you determine the income to be subject uh, to taxation. If there is not an income, you have a loss, and the loss, as we said, can be carried forward to offset future periods income. So the reply is, when you have an income for income state, for, for either's perspective, you have to pay. When you have a loss, you save the loss for future periods. On an ERAP perspective, you pay ERAP only if you have a, taxable, a positive taxable base. Otherwise, if you have a loss, the loss will be lost. Okay? You cannot carry forward the ERAP loss. The difference within ERS. Question from Arthur um, about IVA, VAT, uh, reimbursement. Uh, he wants to, see, to know uh, how are the reimbursement uh, terms uh, and procedures in a case of exporting goods and services to non-EU countries. If you export uh, in goods uh, to non-EU countries, uh, you have no VAT to charge. It will be directly the receiving countries that will apply on the goods, or the goods provided, the VAT in force in its country. So if your activity is to export goods, your positive, your, uh, positive transaction will be not charged with VAT. Of course, you purchase goods and services paying VAT to your suppliers. For this reason, to habitual exporters, you can ask for an exemption to apply VAT on your supplies so that you will not have this credit position against the state. Even if you are not in this situation and you have received VAT invoices charging VAT to you, of course, uh, you can ask for a reimbursement, but my advice is better to um, certify the, the VAT credit and use this credit in compensation with other taxes, using the VAT credit to pay for the ERES due over the year, social security contribution on employees, uh, ERAP if due during the year. Because you, in this way, you have an immediate usage of your VAT credit. VAT reimbursement, it's always possible, but it will be takes a long time to be uh, compensated of the reimbursement of the VAT. After creating a startup using online system, where to apply for VAT registration? And please explain its process in detail. Okay, uh, <laughs> you, you can file for obtaining a VAT number by submitting a form to the Internal Revenue Agency. It's a simple form in which you record your name and the name of your corporation, the address in which you perform the activity, and the date starting from the, um, in which you start your corporate activities. And it's immediate, as long as you file for the, um, the file, you receive within a couple of hours uh, the, your VAT number that you have to use uh, and to report the number of every invoice you file and every invoice you receive. Based on Italian law for the residents of Italy, all worldwide personal income is subject to the income tax. Is there any ex exceptions or special regime as for example in the Netherlands, Portugal or the UK? In Italy, we enforce, uh, as the other countries you mentioned, 
a worldwide taxation basis. It means that every income derived by a resident company will be subject to the tax in Italy. There are exemptions that are elective for permanent establishment. It means that if your corporation has a permanent establishment in other countries, you can elect an exemption for the revenues generated by the permanent establishment, so that the revenues generated by the permanent establishment will be taxed only in the country where the establishment is establishment itself. Okay? Without including the income of the permanent establishment in the Italian resident company, um, uh, taxable basis. Is it true that there are different type of invoices for national customers and different type of invoice for international customers? As we said, you have to apply VAT rate on every transaction you have performed. So you apply a VAT if um, Italian rate if the supplies of goods or supplies of service it happens within the Italian territory. A zero rate applies if you perform transaction with other EU resident companies, in, in, with companies resident in other EU countries. And you apply no VAT if you uh, export or import goods or services. Export or import are referred to the territory outside the EU territory. If we have company in our native country for ex India, for example India, do we need to pay corporate tax in Italy for worldwide sales and income or in Italy we had to pay only for income we earn in Italy? So ready this yeah, so you same. are an Indian corporation which has a permanent establishment in Italy you have to fulfill the obligation for the permanent establishment. So only the permanent establishment in Italy will be subject to IRES, IRAP and VAT rules. If it is the contrary, if you are an Italian company which has a permanent establishment in, in India, the, the, the income derived from the permanent establishment will be included in the taxable base in Italy, unless you electively choose to apply the exemption for the permanent establishment. If our employee is not Italian resident, would he or we need to pay Italian taxes for him, for the employee? Yes, sure. Um, unless the employee is resident in a country where the, which we, uh, Italy has a double, double, um, as a conventional to avoid double taxation. So generally speaking, your non-resident your non-resident employee will be subject to, to taxation for the income derived for, from its employment in Italy. But if the employee is, has a double taxation exemption on the basis on of a convention that Italy has with its own resident countries, you have to apply the provision contained in the convention. Okay. What is the minimum employee's wage rate in Italy? In Italy, we do not have a minimum wage uh, employee okay. salary. Great, so let's give order to this presentation. Let's go back to it. We've talked so far about the annual income uh, tax, about the regional tax and about the VAT system. That is the three main taxes that Italian companies need to pay. Now let's go back to the presentation and please observe that now we've talked about duties so far, now we will deal with opportunities. opportunities. Yes, for sure. And especially with innovative startups, uh, which have uh, one of the alternative requisites to perform research and development activities, you could be um, very interested into this uh, measure of tax credits that are enacted in Italy. The research and development tax credit, which is available to all enterprises, enterprises regardless to their legal form and industry in which they operate, and it applies on a certain percentage on the basis of the research and development activities your company has performed during the year. 
and uh, the activities uh, are listed into the charts and our basic research, applied research, uh, which aims to develop or improving new products um, or processes, experimental development, manufacturing testing of products, uh, processes or services. Of course, the ordinary changes in your products or production lines are not eligible for the tax credit. Once you have your qualified MRD expenses, um, you can elect for the exemption, the tax credit, those type of costs, wages and salaries of the employees involved in the research and development activities, the depreciation of the equipment you have used to perform your research and development activities, the fees for the research you let other companies perform on your behalf, and the fees paid to purchase license for patents and know-how. The tax credit is then equal to the 25% of the qualified R&D expenses you have incurred of what type wages and fee and um, and the fee pays to purchase licenses or the 50 percent of the qualified expenses for um, employees or as well as fee for research in uh, uh, outsource and the tax credit is available only provided that in the given fiscal year you perform the activities of research and development, the total amount of the expenses has been higher than the yearly average of qualified and RD expenses incurred in the three past previous fiscal years, 2015, 2014 and 2013. Moreover, you have another threshold to be met during the year, that is you have to incur at least 30,000 euros of qualified R&D expenses during the fiscal year. At this point, you apply the percentage rate we said before, the 25% or the 50% on the increase of the aggregate increase in R&D development expenses. And you can directly use and claim the R&D tax credit reporting it in your annual income uh, declaration and by using it to offset your income, taxable income, or to offset any kind of um, uh, social security contribution you have to pay to your employees. Related to the um, uh, research and development activities, there is the patent box regime. The patent box uh, wants to um, foster the placement in Italy of intangible asset and the performing of research and development activities. So if with the research and development tax credit you um, go to agevolate the research and development expenses you have incurred with the patent box regime you um, benefit of an exemption of for the income deriving from the result of the research and uh, development activities that turned into patents, process, formulas, design, copyrights, and so on. Every intangible you have development, developed. And the discipline is elective and has a um, lifespan of five fiscal years and cannot be revoked during the five years, but can be renewed after the 50 years. And so two are the requisites to carry out the research and development activities and to have an outcome of these activities. At this point, the revenues generated by the license or the direct use of the uh, intangible asset will be exempt in a measure, an increasing measure, from the 30% to the 50% rate at regime. Then we can focus on some special tax incentives to startups that are now enacted in some specific region of Italy, for example, Lazio region, 
reserved to innovative startup a um, reimbursement for the IRAMP paid during the years where the company can be qualified for as an innovative startup. Campania region as well provides for a, a contribution in kind, in, in cash, of the 100% of the IRAP due during the years 2016, 17 and 18 for innovative startup. Then there are a fifth rule of uh, public incentive to startup. I advise you to check out every region you are established to uh, met uh, the specific uh, incentive, public incentive uh, the company can receive being uh, localized, uh, being resident in the regions. Without spending time uh, listing uh, the, region, the, the region and the specific incentive, you have in the charts uh, the list of the region with the incentive uh, reserved to innovative startups. Thank you very much. If you have any specific question, do not hesitate uh, to write to us. You, <laughs> the reaction was very fast. I talked uh, to an accountant here in Bologna and he said that uh, he would charge uh, 5,000 euro for one year. It felt to me more much expensive. Is that the normal fee for an accountant uh, for a startup? I know it's a rather personal question, okay, but uh, I think it's uh, interesting. Uh, the amount uh, uh, of the service fee that uh, a professional can charge to you varies widely. It depends, uh, for, uh, for example, of the dimension of your startup, uh, the particular type of industry sector or the activities your startup perform on the complexity of the stuff you can ask to your accountant or lawyer. Since we are talking about a, a tiny IT company with just a few or maybe two employees, um, which has been launched uh, from no longer than one year, is it a proper price in your opinion? or? Yeah, be personal, well, don't, don't, yeah personal. I'm don't on worry. my personal side uh, I could advise professional uh, to incentive and assist a startup probably applying a progressive phase starting from a lower one mm -hmm. to uh, arrive to a regime of the startup uh, with an higher level of fees so try to deal with your uh, accountant uh, uh, an agreement um, probably on a for example on a three basis year in order to have a rising in price for the services uh, so that you have acquainted and you have the opportunity to rise in the dimension of your business uh, and having no problem in paying the higher fee.